Hi, I'm Stu McKamey of the USDA Systematic Entomology Lab. Okay, we're going to start with the first presentation. On the first slide, first we're going to review the four characters you need to look at to identify superfamilies. The face, often visible from, most visible from a ventral view. The antennae, the hind tibia, and the pronotum, which is the dorsal segment behind the head. So there's a mnemonic for these, which is fat pig, F-A-T-P, the face, the antennae, the tibi, and the pronotum. And before we cover uh, some of the other families, I just want to give an example of a cicada. No matter what the size or color, they all pretty much look like cicadas. And if you have any doubt, you can, you can count the ocelli because they always have three. And the other, uh, the other superfamilies only have zero to two. Now, going to the second slide, we look at some examples. The Fulgoroidea have a carinate edge of the edge of the face or frontoclypeus there, a sharp edge or keel, and the antennae are directly be beneath the eyes. This contrasts with the other superfamilies, Membricoidea and Cercopoidea, and this. Leaf hopper, you can see that the face, the side of the face is rounded here, and the antenna is further forward. Sometimes it's underneath the edge of the eye, but it's never directly underneath the eye. Rounded face with the antenna further ahead of the eye. This carina that you do see in this specimen here is actually a uh, longitudinal cleft over the antenna, but it's not the side of the face, the vertical edge on the side of the face is in Fulgoridia. Now going to the third slide, we'll look at the tibiae, the hind tibia, first of plant hoppers and frog hoppers. Here in plant hoppers, the hind tibia has just a few large spines. Here's the hind tibia and has just a few large spines. And we'll look at that in frog hoppers. Here's the hind tibia, and it has just a few large black-tipped spines along it. And the, that condition um, distinguishes it from, from cicadelity with the hind tibia with a row of many spines. Sometimes they're fairly large, but there are always many of them along the hind tibia. This is a tree hopper. Although the spines are smaller than in, in most leaf hoppers, they still have the CD with covered bases, as in leaf hoppers. So here's the hind tibia. I'm going to zoom up on that. And these black based CD are homologous to the basically covered CD in, in the leaf hoppers. So these are the two families of Membricoidea, the leaf hoppers and tree hoppers. Now we're going to look at the, go to the next slide, the fourth slide, which looking at the pronotum of cercopoid families, of frog hopper families. We're going to look at the posterior margin of the pronotum. In Aphrophoridae, which are generally elongate, the posterior margin is W-shaped. In class Opteridae, the pronotum is also W-shaped, and these are small subcircular species, all of them. And in Cercopidae, it's almost straight across. There are two other families, but they've never been intercepted. I'll show you another example of Cercopidae with the almost straight posterior margin of the pronotum. Now we'll go to the last slide of the first presentation and look at membricoids. We look at the pronotum, the last feature you should look at. You see that th this whole triangular structure is the scutellum, and there's always a juncture at about halfway. And the pronotum, except in one family that's rare and never been intercepted, the pronotum stops before that line. 
I'll show you another specimen. So here's the posterior margin of the pronotum. This whole thing is the scutellum. And here's that midpoint that the pronotum does not reach. This contrasts with um, member with atelianity in which the pronotum does cover up to the rise of the pronotum. This is actually, you can see that this is elevated and the pronotum goes just against that. This is a, one of the treehopper families. In membracity, the whole large structure you see here is the pronotum covering the body, which is the usual condition of the treehoppers. There's also the genus Microcentris, the tribe Microcentrini, where the pronotum is short, but it does attain the end of the scutellum. It's a narrow extension of the pronotum goes over the scutellum. There are a few uh, primitive families that lack a posteriorly projecting pronotum, but uh, none of have ever been intercepted. And as an aside, you can identify treehopper immatures because they always have a fused terminal segment forming a tube, fused ventrally. This is the last, this is the ninth segment, actually. This is all the ninth segment, and here it's ventrally fused. This is a ventral view, and it's fused. And everything else, including the atelianids, that is unfused. So you can see the two sides coming together. And I'll put an atelianid immature under the scope, and there's no tube. The sides may be pressed. This is the terminal segment. And there's no tube, it would, it would have been here. The sides are pressed together, but there's no fusion. So in summary, remember fat pig. The face, the antennae, the tibi, and the pronotum. With those four features, you can separate the superfamilies and the, and the families of Circopoidea and Membricoidea.